Okay, great. So hi everyone. Um, welcome to our workshop here, the library at your fingertips, integrating library databases within Canvas. My name is Walter. I am the library director and I am here with three of our amazing librarians. So if we can go to the next slide. What we're going to talk about is how we can integrate um, our library databases within Canvas through something called an LTI. Um, that will be described in further detail by one of our librarians, Evelyn Chantani. And after she, thank you, Roxana, after um, she goes through the basics about what an LTI or what LTI are, um, Roxana Cruz, another amazing librarian here, will help demonstrate how we actually access these tools within Canvas to connect us to the library databases directly. And then Luz Badillo, another one of our amazing librarians here, will describe some of our other resources we can use remotely um, that we can all access as we're working on our courses online. So with this, I'm going to hand this off to Evelyn. Thank you, Walter. Um, in this presentation, you will see how using Canvas LTI allows for a seamless integration of certain electronic database resources into the Canvas shell. And what you'll see is that it makes for a better user experience for the instructors while they're building their Canvas shells and creating assignments, as well as the students who are accessing and completing their assignments within their Canvas accounts. Uh, next next slide, please, Roxana. Thank you. So for if you're wondering what LTI is, it stands for Learning Tools Interoperability. And what it is, it allows for uh, learning tools from different vendors, example, databases, to be launched from a tool within an application like Canvas. And what this basically is, it's a third-party third tool that puts various resources from our databases into the Canvas shells. So our users will be able to get instant access to the electronic resources while they're still within their Canvas accounts. Uh, next slide, please. So you're already probably familiar when building your Canvas account your shells and building assignments, um, you have to add uh, hyperlinks to certain articles or databases or uh, videos. So you're already, if you're already familiar with adding hyperlinks, uh, learning how to embed it is, is, is very easy. Um, you'll see that when you, the old way of doing it is adding hyperlinks, but it requires maintenance. And the way uh, we're gonna show you now using the LTI, you're able to embed these resources and in the future, just forget about it. Um, next slide, please. So with hyperlinks, the old way of um, adding resources into the assignments, there are certain problems that we, we, you'll come up with. Um, one is the easy proxy. Um, earlier this year, there were changes made that were related to the easy proxy, which is a process of authentication. And basically it involves verifying whether the user had correct credentials to access the library's resources. Um, it's a good time right now to take the opportunity to, to check the links in your Canvas shelf. If you had some links prior to January, 2023, you should double check because some of the links may be inactive right now. So um, when you add the electronic resources to the Canvas shells um, using hyperlinks, you have to be aware of these changes because when there are changes to the easy proxy, you'll no longer have access to these uh, articles. So take the chance right now, to, to take the opportunity right now to check on the links. And um, after our presentation, uh, go back and update them by embedding them using LTI. Okay, um, so when you are adding uh, documents into your Canvas shells, do not use the PDF downloads to upload them directly into your Canvas shells. There are certain reasons for that. We want to avoid avoiding copyright violations. Um, there's also some accessibility issues from certain students. The PDFs 
are static. They're, they're, some students need accommodations and this PDF don't allow for that. So um, when you're using the LTI, it allows for a more dynamic experience for both the instructors and the, the students. Because unlike the PDF documents, um, within the LTI, you're, you're using the LTI, you're allowed to highlight certain sections of the articles, take notes about the article, and students, if the assignment requires it, are actually able to upload the notes as part of the assignment. Thank you. Um, so LTI, um, when it comes to LTI, you're able to stay within the Canvas uh, account as you search, select, and embed electronic resources directly into Canvas. Um, you do not have to authenticate it again. Like I was saying, um, when you try to access the resources, they have to make sure that you have the correct credentials. So once you authenticate into Canvas, you're able to actually access the database resources as well without having to um, authenticate again. And also it means you don't have to open up extra tabs or extra windows. You do it all within the same window. Um, and you'll see that um, once you are able to embed it, once you are able to embed it, the you as the instructor and the students can read the articles or view the videos directly into the Canvas account. With, um, so Roxana right now will demonstrate how to access, search, and embed resources from the library's databases through Canvas. Thank you, Evelyn. I hope Evelyn has the, uh, has convinced you about um, going one, going back to updating your hyperlinks from the past, and as well as giving LTIs a try. Um, and hopefully by seeing us demonstrate how it works within Canvas, um, it'll remove that, um, you know, fear of um, how does it work or will it break? Um, will it be accessible? Um, anyway, so let me exit my screen and go to the browser to show you. Okay. Okay, um, can you see my screen? Yes, great. So here um, we are in my sandbox. I have created four different modules, one representing each different um, database that I will be demonstrating how they work within the LTI on, in Canvas. So the first one is um, EBSCO. And I chose this one because it's a little more simple and limited into what it allows you to do within Canvas. So it should be easy for us to start off with that one and I'll show you how. So let's say you're creating a reading list for your module and you want students to read a particular article. All you have to do is create your module, of course, um, just like you would any other um, assignment when you create an assignment or um, any other page. You click on the plus sign at the corner, sorry, at the corner. And then on the drop down menu, you want to go and select external tool. This will bring up a list of different LTIs like our databases. Um, as, as you can see, you'll probably recognize some of the names. And if you scroll down, they're um, arranged alphabetically. So here's EBSCO. And just go ahead and click it. And this new box will appear. So EBSCO owns a few other databases. So it allows you to choose which database you want to search within, or if you like, select all and search within all of them simultaneously. So I'm going to select all just for the fun of it and click continue. So the box is kind of small. So if you want to expand, all you have to do is click on the corner of the box and just stretch it out so you can view it. And then search as usual, enter your search terms. Um, for this, I'm just going to use food desert as an example. So here we are. Click on search, and here are my results. Um, so when you're in a database, you probably don't see this. So within Canvas, this is the button that will allow you to embed these um, full text articles. Um, it's and in, as we move on, you'll see that the way to do it or the the action button for it is going to look a little different in, in each database. Okay, so here we have the same um, 
abilities to the same functionalities of the databases. You can preview the article by clicking on the magnifying glass, reading the abstract. You can view the full text, a PDF full text or HTML. Um, so it works just the same. So for the sake of this example, I'm gonna click the first one. Say I review this um, and I think this is great. I wanna add this to my reading list for the module. Um, I can either click add or go back to the result to find a different article, the result list. So I'm just gonna add this one. And then before you do it, so it takes you back to the box. Um, don't scroll down using this scroll bar or the, out, the exterior one. This will take you to the page name. Here you can customize it a little bit more. You can enter, read this article, and then the title of the article uh, proce um, proce proceeds after the um, colons, and then add item. But before I add item, I want to point something out. Here you'll see a box where if you click it, it says load in a new tab. This will take the student outside of Canvas to a separate tab. So if you don't want that, leave that alone um, and then proceed as usual. So add item, boom, here it is. Um, so here's read this article, the title of the article, and it's hyperlinked. And if we click on it, it loads exactly how I would in the database but right now integrated into the Canvas um, shell. So isn't that great? Um, you, still, you also have the same um, tools um, available to the, the students still will have the same tools available. They can download it, um, save it to their Google Drive and so forth. So let's go back. So once you do that, don't forget to publish if you're happy with it. And then um, now I'm gonna, so hopefully that was easy enough to follow. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate it again using ProQuest. And then I'm, we're gonna go a, a step further than that after it. So let's try one more time. So let's say we wanted a ProQuest um, article. Again, the plus sign plus external tool. Scroll to the P's, here we are. The box appears again. And here's the ProQuest interface. Um, again, you all the features are available as if you were ser searching within the database, because we are. Um, and then let's try that again. Food deserts. And to search terms, search. Here's your list. Again, all the features that the database has on the browser are available through Canvas. Um, let's see. Let's quick look. Hmm, easy to review if you, the article, see if it fits your needs. And then to add it, you actually have to click on the article, unlike um, EBSCO where it had the pl add, um, plus add button. This one, you actually have to go within in order to select this document. See how the button looks a little different. So we just have to be a little visually flexible, look around um, each Database works similarly, they just look a little bit different. So let's say I'm happy with this article and I want to include this. Again, select this document. Using the outside scroll bar, I move down and customize the page name. So read this article. And again, do not uh, click on load in a new tab because I'll take the student outside of Canvas. And then add item. And here it is again. We click on it to review it, to make sure it's loading properly. And here's the article. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so let's go back and let me show you how you can take ProQuest a little step further. So here we are embedding full text articles into the module. You can also do it inside an assignment or discussion post. All you have to do is plus sign, let's create an assignment. And then let's say, Reading analysis. So we click on the new assignment to edit it. Click on edit. Enter your instructions. Read this article and write. Continue on with your instruction. So up here on this, um, toolbar, you want to go to the plug-in icon. You click on that, 
and you click view all, it'll give you the list of um, LTIs. So we can enter pro, there's ProQuest, type it in and it'll load. Again, we're presented with the same um, interface, ProQuest right there, click on, click on whichever um, parameters you're searching within. So let's do food deserts again and search. So looks the same as the other ex um, example. And if you click on it, abstract, full text, if it fits your need, go ahead and select this document. And there it is. It appears as a hyperlink, but tied to the database. So if any changes occur, it'll be updated within that. And then you can go ahead, enter the rest of the information that is um, needed for your assignment, save, and here you are. The article is embedded within the assignment. So let's go back home. However, let me go back real quick. I forgot to point something out. So I showed you how to do this with ProQuest because if we say compare it to this article, let's say you wanted to pull another article from a different database like EBSCO. Unfortunately, EBSCO is a little limited on what it allows you to do, uh, what it allows you to do in Canvas. So the only way to embed EBSCO articles is the way that I showed you at the beginning. Um, only, only does ProQuest and the other databases that I'm gonna demonstrate allow you to integrate it into your assignment discussion and so forth. So unfortunately, it's only um, some databases give you a little bit more freedom, others are a little bit more limiting. So let's go back home. And if there's any questions regarding um, how to do the how to how to recreate this? Go ahead and review the video or visit our YouTube channel. Um, we have a short tutorial videos on how to do it. You can also contact us, and also you can enter your questions in the chat if you have any along this presentation. Okay, so let's move on, and let me show you how to do it with Gail. So Gail, we like a little bit more, only because it allows a little bit more freedom. Um, you can do the same thing you can do with EBSCO and, Pro, uh, and ProQuest. You can embed a full text article. You can add it to an assignment. You can add it to um, discussion posts and any other or a page. So let's do real quick. Um, let's do uh, another example of how to do it as an external tool. So we go, let's use Gill in context. And actually what I just did was I embedded the whole platform in here. Um, I didn't intend to, that was gonna be the second example. Um, however, I just, let me show you how that works. So if you enter Gill as an external tool, it will embed the whole platform into your module as a resource for your students. And which is what, the amazing thing about this is that your students don't have to leave Canvas to search within it. They'll have the same search capabilities through Canvas, um, through these LTIs. So let's say they were researching food insecurity. And they were interested in academic journals or they can go ahead and click on it. They can download the article they can still highlight within here. Just the same that they would when searching the databases on the browser, they have the same capabilities through Canvas. So let's go back home. So again, to embed Gill as a platform, plus sign, and external tool. Now, if we wanted to do it uh, embedded into an assignment, Create assignment, item. Oh, forgot her name. Uh, let's see. Another rating analysis, right? Let's see. Here we go. 
edit. Read this article. So enter the instructions how you would. Continue on again. It'll be the plug um, icon. In con uh, Gell and context is already visible there for me. And then search. Enter your search terms. Search. Let's go to academic journals for this example. Okay, so let's say I wanted this document. Now I have two options. I can link the document so it'll appear as a hyperlink like we saw in the previous examples of EBSCO and ProQuest, or I can embed the document. And what that would look like is it, it will load, the whole page will load as it would load in the database. So let me show you what that looks like. So here are your instructions and here is the article. Enter the rest of the information as needed, click save, and there it is. So now the whole article is embedded within this assignment. That's neat, right? Okay. Any questions about that so far? I think we're good. Um, yes. Um, okay, so I'll move forward. So I hope this has been easy and it's been convincing you about um, giving LTIs a try because trust me, it'll make your life easier. Um, for our final example, I'm gonna walk you through how to embed a video using Films On Demand. So let's move on to module four, click on our plus sign. And then let's click on external tool. Let's go to Films On Demand. And then search food deserts. Okay, so adding a video in this data, uh, adding a source from this database works a little bit different. The button options are different. One, I can preview it, of course. And then the action button is the embed, and it's a drop down menu. You can either record the URL, but if you want to embed, I recommend using the embed. Um, options. So you can embed it as a small video, medium. I'm going to go with small. Again, use the outside scroll bar to edit it. I mean, to edit the page name. Watch this video. Add item. And here it is. And let's click and view what that looks like. And here's your video. So this is going to make creating your course um, reading list or your course assignments so much easier. Um, again, you can embed the articles completely or you can link to them as I shown before. And if you click on this one, it loads. The article loads right there and there's no further authentication. It's so much easier. So you won't have to get those um, questions in the middle of the night or messages asking you, professor, how do I um, log into the databases? I'm having issues. Once they're in Canvas, it's, they don't have to authenticate again. It'll just launch for them. And it's so much easier for them to navigate also the databases um, when you embed them into a module as a resource. Or you can also um, embed them into the side navigation bar of your course and in case um, you need a refresher how to do that, you go to the side menu bar, settings, navigation tab. And then here are all the other ones you can add. Let's say we wanted diversity studies. And then just bring it up to your navigation, side navigation bar, and then just organize it in the order that you like it. If that's what you want to leave it, you can go ahead and save. And if we go back home, it'll be there. And then you just have to enter in your um, course assignment. Hey, check the menu bar for so-and-so database. Um, we currently added a bit more of the Gale databases. So if there's one that's not listed in the LTI list, let us know. Maybe we can work on adding them for you. Um, and then thank you so much. I hope this was easy. Um, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or enter them in the chat. I'm going to exit this view and then 
send it over to, oh, I see I have some question. Um, I'm going to leave the questions to the end since we're getting um, close to our time and have Luz do it. Go ahead and enter them in the chat and um, we'll get to them. So give me a second while I go back. Okay. So in summary, um, Pro, um, EBSCOs is one of the most limiting LTIs in a database in in Canvas. So um, keep that in mind when you're designing your uh, course assignments or anything like that. Um, it, it works only by embedding the link on there. It won't let you embed it into an assignment or discussion post. ProQuiz and Films on Demand work similarly where you can either link to it or embed it into an assignment, discussion post and so forth. Gale, on the other hand, is a little bit um, more flexible. It actually allows you to embed the whole platform so students can search within Canvas using Gale or um, as well as the other features as in embedding the full text source or embedding into an assignment discussion post and so forth. So let me send it over to Luz. Thank you so much. Thanks, Roxana. Um, do we want to, are the, presentation is displaying sort of on the presenter side. Do we want to continue going this way or do we want to keep it going? <laughs> no, give me a second. Okay. I did not see that. Oops. Um, and while okay. Roxanne is correcting that, just to quickly answer, address Bren's and Christine's questions, we'll, we can go back and demo how these situations are possible within Canvas, but we'll let Luz address that first. I just wanted to acknowledge that we see, I see your questions and they're both possibilities and can be handled. Thank you, Walter. Um, Luz, is that better? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Walter. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to be talking about online library services and resources that you can actually access um, remotely from the library. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so here we have our library services. Um, these would be the four, I believe, main library services that would be beneficial to you and accessible remotely. So first we have our 24 seven live chat. You can use our live chat to chat with librarian at any time of the day. While the library is open, if you do use our live chat, you will be chatting with an SMC librarian. However, if you use the chat to ask a question, maybe after the library hours, uh, you will be chatting with another librarian from one of our consortiums. However, they will do the best to assist you. And if they're unable to assist you with your question, they will refer you back to us and we will get back to you as soon as the library is back open again. We also provide library orientations. So in order to request a library orientation, all you have to do is fill out a library orientation request form. We have that form available to you all through the library website, and I can actually put the link in the chat um, during our question time, if that is something that is of interest to you. We do ask that everyone please RSVP at least 48 hours in advance. That way it gives us time to prepare for the library orientation and gather the information that would be best fitting for your course. If you have any questions about library orientations, you can always reach out to uh, one of our librarians, which is Brent Andrum. Um, and they will get back to you and answer any questions that you may have about library orientations. Um, we do offer library orientations in person, but we also offer them online uh, via Zoom. So that is an option to you. Let's see, we also have our workshops. So we offer a variety of workshops throughout the semester. And these are the workshops that we offer. We have a new literacy workshop, uh, some workshops about how to conduct library research, how to use Google in an advanced mode um, to assist with research. We also offer a workshop on literature. And then we have our, I think would be the most popular ones, which is our workshops on citation and how to create citations. So we do provide that for MLA and APA. Our workshops are offered in person and online. So we usually offer the workshop in person on one day and then the following week we'll offer the workshop again via Zoom at the same time. And those workshops are recorded. So if you're unable to attend the workshop via Zoom, uh, they will appear on our library YouTube website. And lastly, we have our textbook reserve request. 
So here at the library, we do offer re uh, course reserves to our students. So how that works is you would fill out a reserve request form. Let us know that you're interested in putting one of your books on reserve. And that way we can check it out to our students for two hours at a time. Uh, we do ask that you provide a student edition copy just to make sure that it is the edition that the student uh, would need uh, to use for your course. Uh, next slide. We also have some library resources that you can access remotely. So we have our LibGuides. We have uh, a variety of them covering different subjects and disciplines. We also have LibGuides covering popular topics that may be covering a topic that may be of discussion amongst our students or um, just community-wide. And we also have some LibGuides lib covering the library displays that we have available to our students and the SMC community here at the library. And I think those are really fun. They, they include all of the books that we have on the display. Um, and then we'll often include links to books that can be accessed remotely uh, so you can engage with the library display in that way. Um, one thing to look out for is we are looking to have LTI integration of the LibGuide. So in the future, hopefully you'll be able to embed a LibGuide and it will appear directly in your Canvas for students to access. And then we have our YouTube channel, which I briefly mentioned. So that is where our workshop recordings will be uploaded. Um, if you're unable to attend the live sessions, either in person or on Zoom, you can also find some database tutorials there, as well as some LTI tutorials. So this uh, video or recording will be available once we're done recording it, but we also have some shorter um, and very helpful LT LTI tutorials on our YouTube channel, if that's of interest to you. We also offer programming. So these are some of our programs that are coming up. Uh, that will be available to you all via Zoom. So on April 6th, we will be having our poetry writing workshop, uh, which is actually being organized by Roxana, which is really exciting. And then following that workshop, we will have the poetry read out loud workshop, which will be on April 20th. And then our graphic novel book club, which meets uh, now two times a month in person and via Zoom. Uh, we'll be meeting on Zoom, Zoom on April 26th. And then lastly, we have our librarians, which are all of us presenting to you all today uh, as a resource for you all. So if you ever have any questions, especially about LTIs, email one of us directly, uh, since the chat is a little bit more um, broadly answered. Uh, the LTI questions, we ask that you direct them directly to one of us. Uh, and we're also open to collaborating on different projects and assisting with research in whatever way we can. So just feel free to reach out and you can find our email addresses at the end of this presentation. Questions. So I think now we're going to make time to answer any questions, um, try anything that you may all have questions about. And you can either raise your hand or enter it into the chat, but I believe we already have some in the chat. Yeah, yeah, there are a couple in the chat that came in a little earlier that I'm going to try to address really fast. So there was one asked by, um, who's growing up here, by Bren, um, just to see how we could embed a newspaper article into the Canvas shell versus a scholarly article. Um, and then Christine asked a question, about how to create an assignment um, for annotations and if there's a way to do that in a collaborative way. A little trickier, um, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and try to answer both of those with one demo. <laughs> so hold on. Okay. So in my Canvas shell here, you can see that okay. I'm gonna go ahead and create an assignment. I'm just going to use the Gale database here. Annotations. Okay. And I'm going to edit this. So before I embed an article, as Roxana demonstrated, you're going to want to put your instructions at the top of the page. So you might say, read this article. 
and then submit your annotations, etc. Okay. I'm then going to use the plugin tool at the top here. I can do the view all to find the database I want to use. I'm just going to use Gale opposing viewpoints here. I'm going to, you can search for your article. I'm just going to go ahead and explore a specific topic. Whoops. Does that work? And find a newspaper article. So here's a newspaper article coming from the New York Times. So if I want to embed this document, I'll just go ahead and click on embed. So it's going to load here. Below my directions, you'll see that I already have some things highlighted here. Um, but if I want to go ahead and highlight something new, go ahead and highlight that passage. I can assign a color to that highlight, and I can add my note. My annotation for this passage. OK. And click Save. Mm, I should have done that in the student view so you could see what that looked like in the student view, because now I just assigned an annotation for the article that the student's going to see, which is a little different. Oh, publish, publish. OK, hold on. <laughs> Okay. So let me do this as a student. So as a student, if I want to submit my annotations for an assignment, over here what I'd want to do is download the article. I'd open it. You'll see that it has the highlights that I assigned as an instructor, but it also has the highlights that I have as a student. At the end of the article, those passages are highlighted again with the annotated notes. So you can ask students to download and then submit through an upload back in the assignment when they're submitting um, for the points for the assignment. So I don't think I activated the submission process for this assignment, um, but you'd have to do that in the settings. So that's one way to get the annotations. If you wanted to do it in a collaborative way, there isn't an easy way to do that within that configuration because the students aren't gonna be able to see the other students' highlights. You would have to set it up as a group assignment and set up the groups ahead of time, and then the groups would have to coordinate how they're going to share those annotations between themselves to submit the assignment for you. I hope that makes sense. Walter, could you also do it as a discussion? You could do it as a discussion. Yeah, because it works the same way within the embedded, um, and then the students could submit their discussion points as their annotations on there and look at that collaboratively and do that chain. You can say, please respond to your group members or someone else's posts and notes about this. Um, but then they would have to, if you did it that way, you just want to be careful because there'd be a lot of, I don't know exactly how they'd see everyone's annotation notes through the discussion chain that make it a little complicated. Oh yeah, and, and um, with the ProQuest US Newsstream, um, you'd have to do it through either the link option with ProQuest um, with, or just do it as an embed with the article without an assignment instruction, but it will embed that HTML from the newspaper in there. What I was trying to get at, and I was not doing it very well, and I apologize for that. Oh, sorry. It's in the examples, uh, all databases were searched and um, a lot of times English instructors, I'm thinking off of a few, will say, I want you to go to this database. So US Newsstream, for example. So within ProQuest, you can pick that just that database. And yeah. Just that yeah. database. Let me show you. So if I were to go back to modules and leave the student view.
So I would have to do an external tool for ProQuest. Um, this is important because for years we've been telling people it's not ProQuest, it's US News Stream and blah, 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 or it's not EBSCO, yeah. it's academic search, that sort of thing. So this is a change for a lot of our faculty. Oh, sure. So over here, you can change the databases. And then you'll see like academic video online, that's a ProQuest database, but you can change it just to, if you don't want the full US News Stream package, and you're just looking for the US major dailies, you can do that. You can also limit your search then within that to a specific newspaper. So if you just wanted to look for the LA Times, you can do that here. And then it will load the search. I think that would be very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. And there was another question here about textbook reserves um, coming from Christine. And is there a way to do textbook reservations for digital textbooks? Um, so right now, what we're doing with our ebook purchasing, so this is a little separate topic, um, we are targeting ebooks that are licensed in such a way that every student can access it at the same time. So if you have a textbook, um, or if you're looking at optional textbooks, um, please reach out to us and we can do a search to see if there are any ebooks for your class that are licensed in a way for the library to purchase where every student can access them. Um, there are some commercial textbook companies that work really well and then some that don't. So it's kind of an exploration, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, but we are doing our best now to only purchase ebooks that come with that type of licensing. Um, that way, when you're searching for an ebook in the library's catalog or to see if we have access to an ebook, you can feel confident assigning that ebook for your class or referring your students to use that ebook because everyone should be able to access it at the same time. Right now, we kind of have a mix, though, of ebooks that allow that and ebooks that don't allow that. So Ask us first if you have any questions about it, if you're going to assign it as a required component of your class. Yeah, I was just wondering about that, especially for our online students, because I know some of those ebook, I guess, rentals can be quite pricey too. So I didn't know if you did that for digital for the online students too, but it sounds like it's new. <laughs> It is newer for us. It's something we're working through. And like I said, some of the text, some of the publishers work really well with it. Some don't. Um, and yeah, it does get tricky, especially with the ebook rentals, because if it's a student who, um, for instance, drops your class and um, they've already are renting that ebook rental, they lose access to it after the semester and then they have to re rent it or repay, pay again for that same book, which is problematic and frustrating for the student. Um, so we are trying to find ways to support that through the library. And then, of course, we have our OER and zero textbook cost options, too, that you can also reach out to us about if you're exploring that as an option um, for your class. Can you upload the ebook to a Canvas module? Um, it depends on the ebook. <laughs> so there are some ebooks that come with the right permissions where you can embed it into Canvas or upload it into Canvas. There's other ebooks where you will not or should not do that um, for. So, but you can definitely reach out to us um, if you have questions about that or if you have that file and we can see what's possible. Um, there, I don't know, Christine, do you know if there are limit sizes with file uploads? Yeah, it it would it's best if you can link it to some place because and I think that's true with anything within Canvas, um, especially you know looking at video and audio PDF files can also be really huge too. So a link is always better <laughs> than not. And did you see my other question? I said, is Alexander Street video work the same as films on demand or does it have added functionality? 
And are there other video resources that I, I might not know about? Yeah, so Alexander Street Video, if you're not familiar with it, is our other is another streaming video database that we have, and you can embed those videos in Canvas as well. It works the same as Films on Demand. Um, it doesn't have any additional functionality to it that I'm aware of, um, so it works in the same way. It can be both Films on Demand and Alexander Street Video can be embedded as discussion assignments too, so you can frame, you know, instructions above it and then insert it as an embedded video in that discussion. So it could be like, watch this video and let's discuss you know, key points from this or your reaction to it. Um, we do have um, access to Canopy now with um, a limited collection within it. Canopy does not embed directly into Canvas though. So you would have to link out to Canopy um, if you wanted to use one of those videos or have your students go directly to the Canopy database to find those videos. How would that work? Um, so from Canopy, you would have to get a link. Let me see if I can find an example, hold on. Because <laughs> I I watch Canopy myself with my LA Public Library card, but if I would share that link, if you don't also have a Public Library card, it won't work for you. So that's what I'm asking. Yeah, so it will authenticate you for as an SMC student. If it doesn't authenticate, you would search for Santa Monica College, like at their login page as yeah. an institution, and that would bring you in to what we have access to. So because we're an academic library, we do have a different access level than some of the public libraries. They also have a completely different model, how Canopy offers the videos. So I know with some public libraries, they say, oh, you can only watch five videos this month or 15 videos this month, and then they cut you off. As an academic library, we have a different suite of videos that we have access to, but there's no limit. So you can watch as many videos as you want during that month. Um, and as many people can view those videos as well for the ones that are active, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. And then um, does this include just like documentary type films or does it include like Hollywood movies too? <laughs> um, it includes a mix. So there's okay. um, they're heavier with the documentaries, but they also have um, some of the some of the um, not big commercially produced. No, I yeah, you know, they're independent and art house type um, movies. I just think it would be interesting for like, we have some film history classes and, and things like that. And anytime they can give their students access to something for free. Yes. Is, is good. So we are looking for, we are looking at a solution for commercial videos, films as well, um, that come from the bigger houses. Um, we're not quite there yet, but we're working on it. That's awesome. And I support you in that endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And someone else had a question about captions. Um, so no, not all the videos are captioned in Films on Demand and in Alexander Street Press. So just always double check. The majority of them are though. I would like to say like 90%, 95% are. And then when they're not, um, we, they are open for us to like put in a request and then they try to work on getting those captions, um, put in as quickly as they can. Um, it's just wherever it is in their workflow as they work on captioning the videos. Yeah. Yeah. You don't come across them too often. You're right, Christine, <laughs> the uncaptioned ones, but they are out there. So every once in a while, they hit us by surprise. I'm like, oh, can't use that one. <laughs> um, I have, I'm sorry, I have another question. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the instructors I help. Um, do you guys, is there an, inner, uh, an integration for the internet archives or, you know, internet.org where you can go link to, like, I think they're like, things that don't have copyright attached to them anymore? Is that an LTI or do you know? Or is that something just link for now? For now, I would say a link out to. I haven't seen any embedded tools with Internet Archive 
Um, I could be wrong, but I don't know if any of the other librarians have seen anything. Because I know that that also gets heavily used as well with yeah. our instructors. So, yeah, definitely. I would say um, with the Internet Archive, definitely link out and then just also be careful because sometimes things show up in the Internet Archive that shouldn't be there legally. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that does do happen that. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I have two screens, so it's hard to tell which one is being portrayed. <laughs> um, so here's our contact. Um, if you have any questions regarding today's presentation or any other future questions about any LTI that you hope that we have or can include, we can look into it. Um, and any other remote library um, resources, um, questions also, again, just uh, because you're more remote and we're not um, in person or um, we're always accessible. Um, so don't hesitate to ask for any questions or reach out to us. We're always happy to help collaborate in any project or um, assist with this new LTI integration of the library databases. And I don't know if the rest have any final notes, but I'll pass it on to Luz and Evelyn. No, I think that's it. Um, thank you to everyone who attended this presentation. I will actually go ahead and put in our social media links into the meeting chat in case anyone is interested in following us there. Uh, we do keep it updated with any library events going on. So I'm going to put that in the chat. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. And thank you, Walter, for answering those questions. And thank you, everybody, for being here. And I think that's a wrap for us. Evelyn? <laughs>